Good morning, class. Today we are looking at section 3.2 of the book, which is a continued discussion of uh, one quantitative variable. So today we're looking at descriptive statistics and we're looking at how you would describe a distribution or a graph of one quantitative variable. So there are four areas that you want to talk about when you're describing distribution. The first one is the center. So center is just as it sounds. You want to identify where the data is split in half. The next one that we have is variability. So variability is going to describe for quantitative data how much spread there is in the data set or in the distribution. So the next one we have is outliers. Outliers is a atypically large or atypically small value. So it strays far away from the rest of the data. So all of those things are easier to see when you have a graph. Today we're going to focus mostly on the fourth area that you want to use when describing a distribution, which is shape. Whoops, the daisies. So shape then is going to help you describe what the actual graph looks like. So there are multiple shape descriptors. I'm going to draw a few pictures and then we're going to talk about how you would describe those shapes. So. One, another, another, okay, so those are some shapes that we can have for different graphical displays. This graph here, this graph here, and this graph here would all actually be described as symmetric because when you look at it, you could split it in the middle and there would be an equal amount on both the left and right hand side. So all of them are described as being symmetric. So that means symmetric wouldn't be a sufficient descriptor of shape. So we also have to deal with, um, besides symmetry, maybe how many peaks there are. So when you look at this one, it has one peak or it would be described as unimodal. So we have one peak, so a moment where it's peaking and then falling once. So this one then, stands to reason, would be called bimodal because it has two peaking moments. So it rises and falls twice, so it's bimodal. So all three of these that have the check marks are symmetric, and this is unimodal, and this would be bimodal. So one peak is going to be unimodal, two peaks would be bimodal. This one also is sometimes described as being bell-shaped for the obvious reasons. It has a shape of a bell. So if you see that, you can kind of see that bell like you would see a normal bell in everyday life. This one is symmetric, and it also is described as being uniform. So when it has that rectangular shape, it's going to be described as being uniform. Now these down here, because there's only one peak, you can see that that would be unimodal as well. However, if you describe something as unimodal, it doesn't deal with symmetry. So you can see that these do not look the same as the graph up here that's symmetric. So I would have to describe the symmetry of this. So right here, this would be called right skewed. And it's called right skewed because that's where the skewness is happening. So the skewness or drag of the graph is happening on the right hand side, so I would describe that as being right skewed. The bulk of the data is on the left and the skewness is happening on the right. So this one, because the skewness is happening on the left hand side, would be described as left skewed. So the bulk of the data is on the right, but the skewness or drag is happening on the left. Sometimes right skewed is referred to as positively skewed because it's happening at the high end of the distribution. Similarly, left skewed is sometimes described as negatively skewed because it's happening at the lower end of the distribution. But I think right and left are more intuitive because that's the direction or the location where the skewness is happening. So those are specific shape descriptors. So when you describe a distribution, there are four areas. Center, so where the data is split in half. Variability, so how much spread there is. You would identify outliers, so an atypically large or atypically small value, and then shape. So when you describe shape, these are the shape descriptors that we use. 